Now, if you want to debate a motorcyclist, there's one thing that we all have in common here, and that is we are super passionate about the bikes and the brands of bike that we ride. And while that can create some healthy debate, there's one thing that links all of us together, and that is the need to accessorize our motorcycle to better fit our riding style. But accessories are expensive, and so that's why I wanted to come up with a list of the seven best or must-have motorcycle accessories that you need that are under $100. Now, I'm mainly catering this list to cruiser and touring motorcycle riders, Harley Davidson and Indian. Those are my two uh, passions as far as the brands that I like, but uh, there are some things on this list that any motorcycle rider can use, and in my opinion, I think they need. But no matter if you agree or disagree with the list that I'm gonna provide, I'd love to hear either your own list or tell me some things that you absolutely have to have on your motorcycle, no matter what you ride. And if you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. Now, the first one I wanna talk about will cater to every single motorcycle rider out there. And it's having the ability to actually protect one of the investments or another upgrade on your motorcycle that's way more than $100 and that is the ability to lock your seat. Most manufacturers straight from the factory, at least Harley-Davidson and Indian for that matter, have a simple Phillips head screw to remove the seat. And even a stock seat can be really expensive, but if you upgrade that thing to a heated and cooled seat, saddleman seats, anything like that, well, now you have basically anywhere from $500 to $1,000 that your butt is sitting in that anybody with a Phillips head screwdriver, just a common tool, can come by and snatch off your bike. So when I went up to Volunteer Audio last year, they actually sell a motorcycle seat lock made by Robert Becker Designs. And this one is a really easy upgrade. You take your factory screw out, you put the new screw in. The one from Robert Becker though actually has a camming device on top. And so once you get that screw down in there, then you put the actual lock down, you cam it over, lock it, boom, you're good to go. They have several different colors and stuff if you want to go with those. I went with a red one and they're easy to get to, right? They have their own separate little key, uh, which you can actually have, you know, uh, multiple things from them key to like. But if you put like a tour pack over uh, the back of the motorcycle, like I did on my road glide, it's even harder to get to, okay? And so that makes it inconvenient if you have to get under the seat for any number of reasons. But if you don't have that, the access is really quick and you just simply unlock it, pull it off. If you need to get under your seat, get to the battery for any number of things, boom, you're good to go. But it just makes it a lot harder for thieves to take your really expensive seat off your motorcycle. This is a must have for everyone. Another important thing for all motorcyclists is the ability to keep up with your tires and make sure the pressure is where it should be. You only have two of them and so you wanna take care of them. Last year I bought a motorcycle inflator and while it did an okay job, I found that it was really slow. Even inflating a motorcycle tire, it just really did not do as good of a job as I was hoping. And also the hose was a little bit shorter. So I ended up buying a new one, a different one off of Amazon, and this thing actually does a really nice job, but it has more than just the ability to inflate the tires. It also can be used as a jump box. It has a flashlight built in, and uh, it's a power bank, so you can charge some of your items on the go. And this thing was like 70 bucks, and it has the instructions right on the inside that's on the, the little padded piece that separates your cables from the unit itself. It's a square design, and so whenever you hook it up to the valve stem, you clamp it down, and then you can just set it right there. It'll show you what your current pressure is, set it to what you want your pressure, or what your pressure should be, and then boom, it inflated in seconds. And so I found that this thing is much more useful. Another ability you have with this unit specifically is the ability to jumpstart your bike. Now with the Harley Touring Machines, you don't have to take the seat off. You can hook up you know, your positive to the starter, ground yourself out somewhere, and boom, you can start your bike like that. But even if you do have to take the seat off, it's much better to have one of these units on standby in case something happens, and that way you can get back on the road quickly. Now again, Volunteer Audio actually sells a dedicated one. So essentially their system, and again, it's under a hundred bucks, is they actually have eyelets. And so you can hook those eyelets up to the battery, right? And then it has a plug at one end. And so that plug, let's just say it's, 
you know, kind of right there under the seat. If you need to jumpstart your bike, you take the unit, plug it in, you jump start, boom, you're good to go. You don't have to hook up anything except for that plug. So it's kind of a, a permanent in-spot battery charger or battery starter if you ever needed that. And again, that one's under a hundred bucks too. So if you don't need the power bank and some of the other features of the, of the one that I bought, that's a good option for you as well. Now, one thing all motorcyclists need is the ability to mount their cell phone to your handlebars, whether that's for GPS or any number of things. And the best system I've found as far as a cell phone mount by far is quad lock. You have the impact resistant case on the back of your phone, and then you have the mount either on the handlebars. They have a brake or clutch master cylinder mount that will replace the two stock bolts. You put the spacers in there and boom, you're good to go. And so with this one specifically, you take your phone, you rotate it, boom, lock it into place. You're good to go. And all of their stuff is interchangeable. So if you want the uh, vibration dampener or if you want the wireless charger, you replace the head, you put the new one on, and it's still the same system all the way around. And as far as security, I find that this is much better than any of the RAM mounts and even some of the more expensive ones. I know one of my buddies bought one from Harley and it kind of had the levers that you close in around your phone depending upon the size. And that thing was always just coming loose and it just, it wasn't of the best quality. And so the one from Quad Lock, in my opinion, is the way to go. But having the ability to mount your cell phone right there is super important. Now this one specifically is for Harley Davidson riders that have any of the bikes from 2014 with the Rushmore project up to 2020. And that is the hydraulic clutch. To me, it absolutely killed my hands, especially in stop and go traffic. Now, to be fair, I did have carpal tunnel surgery about, you know, over 10 years ago at this point. Um, but since that surgery, I've never had the strength in my hands like I used to. And so having the ability to swap that clutch out was necessary because in my opinion, the hydraulic clutch, it, it engages almost all the way out. And so when you're like this, uh, especially if you have any kind of hand issues, dexterity, whatever, it really sucked. Now they since have gone back to the cable clutches starting in 2021. But if you have one of those bikes from let's say 14 to 20, uh, if you go with the Oberon adjustable clutch levers, these are the best levers that I've ever used uh, in my opinion, because you have eight different settings. So you can set it all the way out or you can set it where it engages super quickly. I have a buddy of mine who's the only one that's ever ridden my bike and, and he has a tendency to actually stall out when he gets on my bike because I have mine set at two. And so mine engages super quickly, whereas his is still the factory hydraulic clutch. But it is really nice. You turn a dial and boom, you're good to go. And you still kind of keep the benefits of the hydraulic clutch, right? You know, change the fluid every couple of years. And so, I, I don't know, I find that the hydraulic clutch for, for that, as far as maintenance, is actually better. But then you get the benefits of having the adjustability with like a traditional cable clutch, except a little more adjustability. Now, these are just over a hundred bucks, but I had to include them. So if you have any kind of issues with that hydraulic clutch, for, I don't know, 122 bucks. I think it's 96 pounds. So, you know, we could kind of say, hey, technically under $100, depending on the country you live in. But man, this is such an awesome upgrade. I've done it in my street glide and I've done it to my road glide now. And I think it's one of the, uh, the best things that I've ever done as far as an upgrade. Now, here's a really simple one from Sarah that I got this past year. And those are the bolt cap covers. So, Harley does a really good job with blacking out the entire engine, except for those just dull looking bolts all the way around the trans cover and on both sides of the bike. And so uh, Cero actually sells these aluminum caps that you can simply put on top of those bolt cap covers. Um, I found that by taking a plastic hammer and actually, you know, knocking them in place, they actually do a really good job. And so I think these are like 60 bucks, $69. And so it will cover the entire bike and make it look aesthetically more pleasing. 
Now, of course, you can get them in chrome, you can get them in black, and to me, it just makes a huge difference. Now, if you don't want the Sarah ones, of course, there are some companies that make magnetic versions of these as well, so that may be a better option for you, but I think the Sarah ones do a good enough job. As long as you, like I said, get them tapped on there, I found that I could not just simply press them on there with my thumbs. I had to get them tapped on there, but once you do that, uh, it really makes a huge difference. And this is something you can do for well under a hundred bucks, and it has a huge aesthetic difference to the motorcycle. Now this one may ruffle some feathers, but I gotta say it. So, you know, each rider is gonna make a decision as to how much risk they're willing to take. Some riders will not go on their motorcycle unless they have their helmet, but that's, you know, that's like the minimum for them. Uh, some riders will be fully suited from head to toe. Other riders, no helmet, pair of shorts, maybe even sandals. Do I think that's dumb? Absolutely, but that's their decision. At minimum for me personally, I have to have a helmet, long pants and boots on. And there's another thing I have to have and that is gloves because all of these other things are really expensive. You know, a good helmet, super expensive, definitely not under a hundred bucks. If I get rip resistant Kevlar infused pants, those are gonna be more than a hundred dollars. Riding boots, more than a hundred bucks. But gloves you can get for well under a hundred bucks and this is something that like can, you know, basically help you get back to work in case of a crash because one of the first things you're gonna do is try to brace for impact if you come off your bike. And I've seen some pictures and videos of road rash and it does not look fun, especially on one of the most important things that we all have, which is our hands. So I know it's a little bit more boring, but at minimum, I have to have those gloves on. And of course a helmet and some of the other stuff I talked about, jeans and my boots, but those gloves are really, really important because like I said, that's one of the first things that's going to impact. Of course, this is highly dependent upon the type of crash you have. If it's a low side, maybe not as much, but I like the ability to, to be able to protect my hands. Now, another thing that I could throw in here, because I don't want to bore you guys to death with another clothing item, but a good back protector. These can be had for a hundred bucks or less. I wanted to throw an airbag vest in here because I think that might be something that I invest into uh, this coming year and of course do some videos on how effective those are. Uh, but at least a back protector, right? Or And, and a chest protector. And so uh, the one I have, I wanna say it was like 80 or 90 bucks. And so it goes all the way down the length of my spine. And then of course it has protection in here. and. That's just in case, right? Just in case, because one thing about it is I don't want to get into a wreck and not be able to ride my bike ever again because of some you know, serious spine injury or something like that. And so those are some of the things that unfortunately you have to think about. Another thing, if you don't want to go that route is a rain suit, right? Having one of these, roll it up, save it for a rainy day, literally, and you know you can uh, make your ride a little bit more comfortable. So these are three different things under $100 that you can get that have huge benefits. Another fun thing that you can get for under 100 bucks for your motorcycle is the ability to accessorize, whether that's the fuel tank lid, the timing cover, the transmission cover, shifter pegs, all of this kind of stuff. Now, as a total set, like let's say you go with the Willie G setup from Harley Davidson. You know, if you do your floorboards, you do the passenger pegs, all this kind of stuff, it's, it's gonna be well over $100. But for each one of these single pieces, it's definitely under 100 bucks. Fuel tank lids, I think are like 70 bucks. And so you can, you know, kind of piece out and accessorize as you go along. And a lot of these things are under a hundred dollars. And so you don't have to do it all at one time. I think on my street glide, I did the uh, fuel tank lid first. Cause that's one of the, the, the things that I see all of the time. And then Miss Tech Shop bought me some stuff for Christmas and that kind of finished everything out. But you can get your little shifter pegs. If you have a heel shifter, you can change that peg out. So these are some cool little things that you can do to kind of spruce up the motorcycle, at, you know, depending upon the theme that you want to go with. And the last thing I want to talk about here is a big ass cup holder, specifically from Ciro. And so you can fit, you know, tumblers in these and just have the ability to grab something to drink quickly whenever you're on the road. Now, I find this way more important in summertime. You know, you fill it up with ice, put water in it, boom. You know, you have a straw, 
take a sip, no matter if you have a helmet on or not. And uh, just a, a quick way to grab something to drink whenever you're going down the road. And so this is another investment that I'm going to do this year because one of my buddies has one on his bike and he has it for his wife as well. And uh, you know, I see him taking a sip of water for going down on a long road trip or something like that. And I'm like, dude, I really need one of those things. It's always something I think about whenever I see him using it or I see it on his bike and I'm like, dang, I got to get one of those. So Ciro has the big ass cup holders. That is another uh, really cool motorcycle accessory that you can get for under a hundred bucks. And so those are seven of the best motorcycle accessories that you can get for under a hundred dollars. And what I really like about this list is that it doesn't just cover Harley or Indian riders, but it encompasses all types of riders that can utilize a lot of this stuff. Now I want to hear from the community. What are some of the best accessories that you've bought under $100 or some of the best budget stuff that you put on your motorcycle that you think is worth talking about or leave your own list down in the comments below. Whether you agree or disagree, I'd love to hear from you. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. You could also join the channel right here and never have to leave YouTube or join us on Patreon. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.